I'm often asked, is that a violin or a fiddle? Do you know the difference between a violin and a fiddle? If you do, raise your hand. It was a trick question. There is no difference between a violin and a fiddle. <laughs> it's the same instrument. It's the music. It's the way you play. It's how you play. So I'm sure that was your answer. And if it was, you're absolutely correct. Oh, Madam Toastmaster and fellow Toastmasters and most welcome guests, this is the third in a series of speeches I'm giving, and each one will feature this lovely instrument that has been my passion since the age of six. Now, I want to get across three points to you today, and I want you to take these to heart. And one of them is that no matter what it is that you do, you can be too confined by your own <coughs> thought processes, because I was confined by mine. And the second is that old adage, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And finally, open yourself to new possibilities. Now, I studied classical violin for a long time. And so for me, the violin was the only thing there was. And so playing meant something like else was not acceptable. But one day I went to a party and I heard people playing this music that was so different. They had violins, but they were playing them like fiddles. <coughs> and I felt so moved by the energy of what they were playing that I said, I want to learn how to do that. And they said, well, here's some music. Go learn that music. So I went home. And I found a piece called Soldier's Joy, and I came back and played it. And then I said, you're really a classical violinist, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no fiddler. <laughs> it wasn't until I threw the music away and immersed myself in the sounds that I was able to sound a little more approximately like <laughs> When in Rome, do as the Romans do. <laughs> now, if I'm playing in a symphony or playing a solo, that wouldn't be so great. But if I'm playing in a jam session where everybody's playing old-timey music, then that's the way to play. And it was a painful lesson for me to have to learn how to do this, because I had grown up reading the music and learning all the notes from the page. And so when I threw them away and I had to listen I had to listen for the notes. I had to translate that sound into something else. And I had to do everything all differently. I had to do it all wrong. I had to do it exactly the way my teachers said not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> because that's what it takes to play the fiddle. Now, there are many styles of traditional fiddling. The one that we often think of actually came to Appalachia from Scotch and Irish settlers who brought their music from the old country over and then adapted it to way, the way the sounds were and the way that the landscape was. And so one day I went to another party and these people were playing music that was completely different. They were playing traditional Irish music. And I heard that and I said, I want to learn how to play that. And so I used everything I'd learned in playing old-timey music to play these Irish tunes. And they looked at me and they said, you're a real Yankee fiddler, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you see, playing Irish music is very different than playing traditional American music, let alone classical music. When you play traditional Irish music, 
It requires an entirely different mindset, an entirely different feel, an entirely different way to approach things. And they have different types of sounds. They have jigs and they have reels. And the jigs sound like something... sound like <laughs> and there's so many more if you go down to Louisiana they have Cajun music which is entirely different sound each region has its own Sound. And what I've learned is that there is something about the geography of each of these places that produces these types of sounds. Why is music so different in Ireland and in the hills of Appalachia when the tunes that they play are the same? Mm -hmm. The very environment is different. When I spent a month in Ireland, it seemed as if <coughs> the hills themselves were resounding with these different sounds. And when I walked about the streets of New York City, those sounds didn't feel right. I heard the sound of a jazz saxophone, the sound of a punk rock band. Those are the sounds of urban life. The sounds of the hills of Appalachia produce the kind of music that you hear there. The Dells in Ireland, the very geography produces a completely different feel. So, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When in Ireland, play as the Irish do. When in Appalachia, play as the Appalachians do. And don't confine your thoughts to just what's in front of you. Expand your horizon. Madam Toastmaster.